don't give up. It can get better. You can get on the right medications. Sometimes, obviously, it takes more than one. Don't give up trying just because the first time didn't seem to work to get better. Hey there, my name is Sean and this is Suicide Noted. On this podcast, I talk with suicide attempt survivors so that we can hear their stories. Every year around the world, millions of people try to take their own lives and we almost never talk about it. And when we do talk about it, many of us, including me, well, we're not very good at it. So one of my goals with this podcast is to have more conversations and hopefully better conversations with attempt survivors. I'm going to keep trying. Now, We are talking about suicide, so this may not be a good fit for everyone. Please take that into account before you listen. I do hope you listen because there is so much to learn. If you are a suicide attempt survivor and you'd like to share your story, I'd love to talk. Please reach out. Hello at SuicideNoted.com or on Facebook or Twitter at SuicideNoted. And as always, I want to thank all of our attempt survivors who have joined me on this podcast since last July when we launched. And our listeners, we now have more than 7,000 per month around the world, and that matters. So thank you again to all of our survivors and everybody who listens. I really appreciate it. I want to let you know that I have another podcast that's actually part of an organization called Grit, True Stories That Matter. We help people tell their stories, and we will soon be launching a project specifically around stories by suicide attempt survivors. So if you're hearing this and this is something you want to learn more about, I will include information in the show notes. These stories matter and your stories matter. Today, I am talking with Kathy. Kathy lives in Utah and she is a suicide attempt survivor. How are you doing, Kathy? I'm good. Thank you for finally connecting with me and working it out. I know we communicated some. I guess the question that I always or often start with, what compelled you to want to reach out and talk about this somewhat publicly, right? There's people will hear this. So I'm glad you did. I'm always wondering why. I'm actually quite excited. I think I have some stuff to share that people may not have actually heard about or thought about Mm. because I haven't heard anyone mention it. Okay. Okay. So you've heard some of the episodes and you've got some stuff that people haven't said before. Really interesting. You are a suicide attempt survivor, right? I am. All right. I'm 50 years old. I've been married for 27 years. So you said you're 50 years old. I'm 50. All right. So you got married in your 20s, if I'm, my math is correct. Correct. Mm-hmm. When I'm 23. Mm-hmm. And um, I have four kids. And like 13 years since my actual attempt. Okay. I should add an S at the end. <laughs> well, are there, all right. So you said attempt or attempts? Attempts. All right. So you were in your late thirties when you tried mm-hmm. the first time? Yes. yes. Actually, I, that's a fib. My very, very first time was when I first got married. Okay. I was feeling pretty sad. And my doctor, I don't know if he didn't know because he's old <laughs> or if he just forgot to tell me, but He put me on Prozac and that made it worse. So I went and took some of my dad's pills and ended up just vomiting them up. So, (laughs) All right. I'm always sort of careful about the language that I use here. Back then when you took those pills, I mean, were you like, I want out? I really do want to die. Or was it a little closer to a lot of pain, don't want to be in pain. And this is the only solution that I can think of. Well, I had a couple of choices and I didn't like either of them. Mm-hmm. It was to see my husband was headed to jail. Okay. And I had to choose between living with my parents again or staying with him. And I was like, what do I choose? Yeah. I don't really want either of them. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I've ever actually asked this particular question. Do you regret doing that? I wouldn't have if it had turned out different. Not that I would have passed away or died, but... If my husband would have let me go to the hospital, he was getting counseling and I talked to his counselor Mm -hmm. and she said, did you think about taking her to the hospital? 
And he said, oh, that would have just given her another thing to beat up her on herself about. So I never went. When you try and you're still alive, and I know we're going back some years now. I don't have the words, but you can see my face. Like, what's, how you feeling? You remember? I was, I cried a lot. And then to make things worse, while he was in jail, I found out I was expecting our first son. <laughs> okay. But that actually helped me decide to stay with him. And this like, is the same guy, right? That you're with? Yes. All right. So that was your first one. And then, and then you have the next one decade or more of like, things are okay. No, things were never okay from even when I was young. Like I, I told you in my couple of emails, yeah. I was raised by some kind of mean ladies. <laughs> I could never do anything right. Mm. You know, stuff like that. But um, I'm really good friends with them now. My mom's like my best friend. So we wow. made up. <laughs> wow, that's a that's that's amazing. All right. So what turned us around was my next story I'm gonna tell you. Mm-hmm kind of stupid what I tried to be honest with you I went down to the river Mm -hmm. you know it was going to be freezing there was actually still ice on the sides of it and I there was enough on one side that I actually sat on the the ice and was uh splashing myself with the water and trying to get all cold and trying to get brave enough to jump in and (laughs) wow (laughs) I have not heard of that before interesting um you were and this is when you were in your late 30s yes Yes, that was 2008. Okay. And a terrible year and a wonderful year at the same time. So many things happened. Mm. When I got home after giving up, there was a police officer there waiting for me and he pink slipped me. Have you ever heard of that? I have not. What is that? That is, he took me to the hospital, got okay. me put in, and they, he handed them a pink slip and said, she's got to be here. Okay. So I was there and I actually had a very positive experience at the hospital. Wow. Great. great. It was awesome. I was even able to help some other people feel better by telling my story and my feelings. And isn't that powerful? Isn't that amazing? Oh, it was. I was just on cloud nine when I left. (laughs) Hey, quick question, Kathy. Did you feel like when the police officer pink slipped you, right? I guess I can say it that way. Yeah. That that was the right decision. That's where you needed to be. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I remember there was one time at one where it was that time. Or the second time that I just didn't even want to talk to the lady. I was just, I didn't like the way she was talking to me. I didn't like the way she was looking at me. She said, how is that working for you? And I said, well, it didn't, I'm, it didn't work. I'm here. <laughs> You're talking about somebody in, in the hospital. In the hospital. Yes. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. It didn't work. Like your goal was to not be alive and you're alive. So there's some disconnect. Right. You know, it's interesting. Some people share with me, like there's a, when people want to try what uh, attempt to end their lives and they don't do it, that they're like, Oh, good. It's like, no, that often is not how they're feeling. I think that's an outsider's point of view of, Oh, of course you want to be alive. No, not always. So that hospital experience was mostly positive. You said, right? Yes. I need to tell you what got me there though. Yes. I want to hear it. We lived up in Washington state for eight years. Mm -hmm. I was friendless, familyless, (laughs) very lonely. Mm-hmm. And I have that seasonal disorder and they hardly ever have, <laughs> they say partially blue sky instead of partly sunny there. <laughs> I mean, partly cloudy. Yep. To make it sound better. <laughs> I just determined I was going to go with my husband one day on, on a Saturday because he had some errands to run. Mm-hmm. I cool. just didn't want to hang out alone with the kids again. Yep. I grabbed the two and we went with him. I didn't realize that one of his errands was to um, get a special holster or something for his gun. And my son found his gun and I feel stupid now in hindsight. I told him don't touch and he was three. I didn't think my husband would have a loaded gun. (laughs) My son, long story short, ended up firing it out the window of the van. Luckily, he didn't hit anybody else or any other vehicles. Yeah. And all he got was some powder burns and a little um, pinch burn from the, it was a revolver. So uh, ever since then, I've just been horrified. I, we were even on the news. Wow. Not bad. But ever since then, I've been really super sensitive about my mothering abilities. Mm. This one day, I got a call from the counselor at my son's school and she left a message. I hadn't been there. She left a voice message that said um, she wanted to talk to me about how I 
discipline Donovan. Mm. So that hurts. Like, oh no, what did I do? And then later I got another call from a neighbor and I didn't even know they were supposed to do this, but it still hurt my feelings. They were supposed to have gone and collected the American flags off the the yards. He was in Boy Scouts and they set them up for the holidays. I guess he and my husband were supposed to have gone collect them and didn't. And so she and her son had to go get them at like nine o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's what broke the camel's back. It's like, I can't do anything right. I'm terrible. Mostly around being mom. Yes. It's all around being mom. Okay. Now. And so that when you say broke the camel, it, it's that's what sent you to your uh, that attempt in the river. In the river, yep. Do you know why you chose that? I know that might be a little graphic. It's just not a common thing, right? Why, why there? Why then? Well, it could have seemed like an accident. My family wouldn't have had to find me. That's the only two things I can think of at the moment. I don't even yep. know how I came up with that idea. <laughs> how did you get out of that? You know, like you. So you had said that you were sitting on the side. You were splashing water trying to maybe jump in at some point or go in. What ends up happening? Well, I started laying there, just kind of waiting. Yeah. And I could hear some ducks quacking in the water, running and some birds. And it was just so calming. And I started thinking of God and (laughs) I'd heard rumor that there was a cougar somewhere. And I thought, oh, God, this is taking too long. That cougar's going to get me before I freeze to death. (laughs) Wow. A cougar. Okay. This is this in Washington or Utah? was in utah the cougar doesn't get you i don't think no (laughs) i didn't even see it (laughs) right might not even be there and then do you got up and i was all wet and went home and that's when the officer was there then to make things worse when he put me in the the cop car yep me to the hospital the bus came and my daughter saw me and she came running lickety split scared to death that she'd never see me again (laughs) wow how old was she she was uh, in kindergarten, so five, five or six. That must be very scary, yes. You went so to the hospital family. via pink slip, and that was yeah. the experience that you said was mostly good. Yeah. Okay, the good part, this is yeah. the good My mom came okay. to see me while I was there. We were sitting, talking with the counselor. She was so naive. She didn't realize, she thought I was just there for depression. Mm-hmm. And when he said the word suicide she freaked (laughs) that kind of is what turned our relationship around she became so loving and caring Uh they told her that i couldn't be alone for i can't remember how long a few months so she and my husband took turns staying with me during that time we just really bonded do you think that your mom needed to hear something kind of like so extreme as a sort of like wake up type thing is she not just just didn't get it until then no doubt she didn't realize how bad it was yeah i don't even know if she knew i was suffering depression until then i'm so glad to hear that she responded in the way she did because you know that could go any number of ways right yeah and i have a best friend and i have lots of of support now too game changer i I love it here in utah (laughs) when did you move to utah we moved back just after my third child was born, daughter. When, when was that? How long ago? The son that was born in the place where we lived before this was is 16 now. So mm-hmm. it would have been 17 years ago. Mm-hmm. You, and you like Utah? I love Utah. Are you part of a faith-based community there? Yes, I am. Yeah, I I'm, know that tends to be a rather influential group there. Is that, is that uh, that's an important part of your life? Yes. I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Mm -hmm. and I served a mission in Argentina. I lived in Argentina, Kathy. Really? Oh, my heck. I lived in Buenos Aires for about a year and a half, six, seven years ago. When were you there? Um, I was there in 90, from 92 to 93. Wow. So I was there for 18 months, though. Because I grew up with my mom and my sister, I didn't get along very well with women. And I had to serve with eight different girls. <laughs> wow, challenge. It, it was torture in some, <laughs> at some points. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of good came from it. I learned yeah. Spanish, Piedmont, Castellano. <laughs> Castellano, yeah, 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 yeah. You just proved that you were being totally honest because most people would not have known that word, Castellano. 
Uh, cool. I was in Mendoza, by the way, the other side of the country from you. Mendoza? <laughs> yeah, I was in Mendoza. I, I've been there. It's gorgeous. Yeah. The vineyards near Chile. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 90s aughts. How many people in the world know that Kathy has attempted suicide? All of my family, my mom, dad, sister, brother, other brother, my husband, and about five or six friends is all. But that's something, right? I mean, not a but. I shouldn't say but. Some people don't tell anybody. So you have told some people. Yeah. Have they mostly been supportive and encouraging, whatever that looks yeah. like? Yes. None of them have said that it was a terrible you know, thing to do. Selfish. I haven't heard that word. Right. Uh, you had sent some a couple emails and we were mostly communicating on Messenger. You shared a lot of stuff, vignettes and moments of your life. And one of the things you shared there, I think, and then you said when we were just getting on this call was that you have some things that you've not heard before in the podcast. So I want to ensure that I ask you about that. And you may have already said that, but what were you referring to? No, I haven't shared that yet. This is not my opinion. This is the truth. <laughs> Okay. We believe in God and Jesus Christ. Most people believe in a God, right? Yes. So. There is an opposite. There is Satan. Okay. Sure. And his main goal is to make us as miserable as he is and ruin our families. And that's what this suicide crap does potentially. It definitely makes the person miserable, you know, whispering stupid things in their mind that they're not worth it or they're terrible or, you know, whatever, you know, we just need to place the blame where it belongs. He's evil and he's real. I mean, sometimes it seems like he's Voldemort, he who must not be named, but he's, he's real. <laughs> I have a question for you. Thank you for sharing that. You're right. I haven't heard that. I'm not sure if it's never come up, but it's not common. What about to people who don't believe that? Right. And let's say they're listening to this and they're going through some really hard times but that message, and I'm not challenging your your truth and what you feel at all, but you know that not everybody agrees with that, right? I know there are atheists. My dad claimed to be one. Right. So like, how might you communicate with them if they're whatever they might be feeling and they don't believe that? That's a tough one, I think. No? Yes. Well, going back to my first time trying to commit suicide, don't wait. It just gets worse. And the worst it gets, the harder it is to the words that came to mind was turn yourself in, <laughs> you know, go to the hospital, take yourself to the hospital. If you have to, but don't wait. Take some sort of action if you can. Yes. You know, one of the questions I ask is around the idea of myths. Sometimes people say stuff like, you know, it's not selfish. People say it's selfish, but that isn't something you've personally experienced much of. But what I am curious about is if you believe there are certain things, I'll call them myths that you hear about or you've experienced that you, and you're just like, no, that's just not the way it is. Do you have any of those? I'm not sure this is one or not, but when someone is contemplating suicide, they're usually thinking things until they think themselves right into a corner where they don't see a way out other and the pain is the emotional pain i swear it's worse than physical pain yes. yeah that's something people don't understand i don't think that it, they may not believe in emotional pain that bad but it it can be it's so hard to communicate i almost wonder if it's even possible it's worth trying but it's is it even possible that's a hard one to say i don't know unless the person has had the same feelings that you've had or similar feelings, it is very hard to understand. Yeah, like I think definitely worth trying. I just wonder, I really wonder. I had asked in the beginning about why you wanted to come on and share. You know, so there's, you know, I, I don't have exact numbers. I just know a lot of people are in a lot of pain. And some of those people uh, try to end their lives. Millions. This is what I say in the introduction of the podcast, worldwide millions. It's a huge number. Now, most don't know about this podcast, and some that do would never choose to join, but some do, and they reach out or they reach back. So you're in that great minority of people who want to talk about it. Do you know where that comes from? 
well, I want to help people like I did in the hospital. Tell yeah. my story, encourage people, tell them not to wait and not let them know that you can, you can get over it. It's mm. not something you have to deal with for the rest of your life. See, I, while I was in the hospital, I ended up getting a psychiatrist, a wise, old, wonderful psychiatrist who got me on the right medications. And I've been okay ever since. I have not tried suicide. I don't plan on it ever again. So you take medication and that's been helpful. Very helpful. Do I'm you... on one for anxiety, depression, and one that, um, but the one that makes me, stops me from doing rash, making rash decisions. And um, then I'm on one that says that's supposed to help me help it. The rest of my medications work better. So how, how many medications do you take each day to feel okay and, and get by? Or, <laughs> or, okay. No judgments. I mean, whatever works, right? Now yeah. I have a quick question, Kathy. I'm always curious how churches or religious institutions, organizations deal with this. And there's, so okay. in terms of treatment, counseling, therapy, medication, what's their take on it? Did that have any impact on your life? We definitely have therapy. This is what, what I consider each week of going to church as yes, recharging my, my spiritual batteries, going to church, feeling the spirit, um, sharing my thoughts. And, um, if I need to, I'll talk to my Bishop. He's like the leader of our, each group award. He, he can counsel me. He can tell me what to do and he can even refer me to counselors. That is just a wonderful support system. Yeah. So you, with, with your spiritual community and your medication and the, and the support you have, do you ever ideate? I know you said you're not going to try again. You don't think that's going to happen. Do the thoughts enter your mind? Oh, once in a while, I'll have a boohoo day and think about my husband's gun, but it leaves my mind quickly. I just remember where the source of that thought comes from. And it's like, oh, get away from me, you know? <laughs> All right. So now you have some ways to deflect it or move it over somewhere else. Yeah. Satan, get him, get him out of me and <laughs> get him away from me. You know, look, some of this stuff that we're talking about uh, from what I know is, can be genetic, right? You might've inherited some genes from your parents. And I know you said you had a very challenging upbringing, no idea about your husband, don't know anything about him. And I know you take your mothering very seriously. Have they been impacted? And I, when I asked that question, both by your own struggle, and in some way, perhaps genetically or otherwise, did they get stuff that is now hard for them? That was a long-winded question, so I'm not sure if it was clear. No, I understand. They honestly could have gotten it from both sides. My mother's, I mean, excuse me, my husband's mother is bipolar. Okay. I know my dad's mother was mentally ill a little bit too. Don't know exactly what was wrong with her because back in her day, we didn't have all these names for our problems, you know? Sure, sure. I know that my brother, who has passed away, and this is an opinion of mine, that he was on drugs and alcohol and everything you can think of. And he made meth. You said he, he made meth, crystal meth? Yeah, he was, a, he was a dealer. But I think all those years of drugs was self medicating. Have you heard that? We do what we can to feel okay. He ended up with brain cancer and lung cancer. That's what took him. Okay. And how old How old was he when he died? Let's see. This was three years ago and he's nine years older than me. So 56, 56. I believe in heaven that there is still learning that he wasn't able to learn here on earth or sure. gave up on or whatever he can, can pick up on up in heaven. And, and so that's kind of where he needed to be. He was having a screwy life. Mm -hmm. He's better. He's better off now. Does that make sense to you at all, Sean? I don't think of it in terms of like what makes sense or not. I think these are beliefs and I think there's power in a belief, you know, what's interesting to me is I think, yeah, hmm. no, it makes sense. It makes sense. Right. And I appreciate you sharing that. So other than this podcast, obviously, do you talk about it much? Because you had said that it was really okay. powerful for you and you want to help people with your story. Is this the sort of start of that? Or do you do that in church or other communities or online, offline? I did it on my mission. 
what I've been taught my whole life, and I believe it. I'm sure you've heard of the, where we're going to be judged, the last final judgment by God. Decide where we go. The way he decides, how God decides, is what we've done and what we've learned. Okay. Makes his decision. So you're feeling pretty good about that moment? I am. Good. Uh, now, I know that you had a lot you wanted to share. And again, we, we traded some emails and, and messages. What else would you like to say or share about your attempt, your recovery, or whatever else you want to talk about? If I want to say that if the first time you get help, you don't feel like it helped that much, or if you go back to where your triggers are, don't give up. It can get better. You can get on the right medications. Sometimes, obviously, it takes more than one. Mm -hmm. Don't give up. Don't give up trying just because the first time didn't seem to work to get better. Do not give up. Right. Sometimes it gets better, right? Yeah. I didn't tell you this, but I got pink slip twice. <laughs> so. Oh, really? I did. What was yeah. the second scenario? Same thing, but I don't remember what happened that triggered me. Mm -hmm. But this time I went and laid on the railroad tracks. <laughs> when was this? It was that same year, 2008. It was a it's shitty year. Yeah. But like I said, it was a, a really good, important year in my life too. Yeah. So the first time was at the was at the river, very yes. cold. This one was at railroad tracks. Obviously, the train didn't come. Yeah, it did. It was coming, and I and it was honking its horn, or you know, I just thought, oh, I can't do this to that engineer. So I got up and got off the tracks, and he had stopped the train and came looking for me and hailed a police officer. <laughs> so they pink slipped me again. Okay. Was that also a good experience in terms of the hospitalization? And no, no, nope, it wasn't. No, I was very sad. I told him I don't want to go back to the hospital because I felt like I'd failed and that it just didn't work, you know. And that's when I met the doctor that helped me. the The railroad was after the river. Yes. Okay. So that was part of your part of your journey, right? You yes. Those two attempts. That year, 2008. Yes. It opened my husband's eyes too. He realized I couldn't take care of the kids all by myself. And he had to learn how to pitch in more. And he does. He did. And he's awesome. Good. Yeah. He looks awesome. Did either of those times, I'm, it sounds like you didn't, it sounds like there, were, it was, there was some planning, but not a lot. Tell me if I'm wrong. Like It wasn't no. totally impulsive, but it wasn't something you were planning for months. No, it wasn't. And it also sounds like given, I mean, those are rather unique ways to do that particular thing. I haven't heard much of that in terms of hypothermia and the railroad tracks. I am guessing that you didn't say goodbye formally. Not formally, no. Yeah. And I, and I don't know if this is un unnecessarily graphic or detailed, but I just wonder what are those moments like for people and the choices they make before that final choice. So, yeah. You're not traditional, Kathy. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah. One of the doctors said, you're very creative. <laughs> right. <laughs> Huge thanks for, for connecting with me and making this conversation work. Before we say goodbye, what else, if anything, would you like to share? I think we've talked about everything I'd like to, and I appreciate you letting me. Perfect. I'm so glad that you feel that way. I'm glad we, uh, we talked. Thanks again, Kathy. I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Talk soon. Okay. Bye. Bye. As always, thanks so much for listening and all of your support. And special thanks to Kathy out in Utah. Thank you, Kathy. If you are a suicide attempt survivor and you'd like to talk, please reach out. Hello at SuicideNoted.com or on Facebook or Twitter at Suicide Noted. And of course, if you can help us out by rating or reviewing this podcast, if you listen on Apple, we'd really appreciate that. That is all for episode number 74. Stay strong. Do the very best you can. I'll talk to you soon.